Chefs, please open your baskets. And we are looking at sardines, corn on the cob, ishtabintum, and canned sloppy joe filling. Hold on, Ted, not here. We ain't making no sloppy joes out of no can, huh-uh. I'm talking sweet, I'm talking heat, and I'm talking putting it together, all gonna be so good. Cowboy sloppy joes. Now, some of y'all might have seen that episode I was on, Chop Grill Masters, long time ago. Woo! It was nerve-wracking, it was to say the least, and them folks used groceries I couldn't even spell. But that day when I finally made it to the finals with three other chefs and we was out there that morning, wind blowing about 40 miles an hour, and they thinking we might have to cancel, and I'm thinking, hey, that's a normal day in Oklahoma. Ain't nothing wrong with this. So what did Ted do? He got up there and he opened up them baskets and he said, what? Sloppy Joe mix in a can. Mm. Folks, I ain't never used that stuff in my life. We're talking about combining all these flavors to make this stuff just really make them taste buds get out of your mouth and run a race. They gonna set a record they are. When you can blend that good hamburger meat, and that's what we're starting with folks, good 80-20, and then you season it just right, but putting them onions in there, <clears throat> then you get that barbecue sauce with a little cheese. Now folks, before we go any further, hey, we have done set the dates and it has been announced. What are we talking about? tour dates for our brand new cookbook, Faith, Family, and the Feast. We're gonna to be touring across the United States to a lot of places. Hey, we're probably gonna run into you. So be sure and check our events page down there. Shannon will have you a link below where you can go to the website and it's gonna tell you what day and which city we're gonna be in. Now folks, these Sloppy Joes is handy and they easy to make. And a lot of times me and Shan would make them on a ranch early in the morning if we was having to break camp. Now you're talking about breaking camp. This is not no easy chore. Fold that fly up, put it in the wagon, get everything loaded, hook up a team to the wagon after you got them harnessed. Shannon have them sloppy joes all made up in them good old buns and we'd wrap them up and we might move 14 miles that day. But guess what we had? A drive up window. Yes, it weren't no Mackey D's or a Hardy's. This was driving up right at the wagon. Them cowboys would ride by. We'd pass them out a sloppy joe. They'd be good to go, but what happened? We had a lot of repeat customers. They'd just circle back around and come again until they all run out. Hey, I think from this point on, you should know, we had technical difficulties. Yes, we had a hooper blooper, we did. I mean, a big one. So as you watch this from now on here, going forward, all the sound you're gonna hear is coming right off the camera. You might even hear a little wind noise come through there, but it's all gonna be good. It's cooking in Mother Nature's kitchen, and hey, we can do it, and y'all can hear it. Well. It's time to get things to happening. Now, I'm gonna cook this in a 12 inch Dutch oven today. We'll set it right out here. So I got me a pound and a half, member certified Angus beef, 80, 20. We're gonna dump her right in there. Give it a good chopping with our little mesquite spatula. And I can hear a little sizzle action already starting to take place. And it is a good time while we just got it sitting right there to season. What we're gonna season it with? Anybody know? You in the 14th row down there with the binoculars. Yep, it is Red River Ranch Original. You need some? Hey, we'll have you a link up there where you can find it. So just keep stirring it around. Get her good and brown. You don't want to leave it in big bites. You sort of want it to be crumbled up a little, but I don't want it to be like of a mealy texture. So don't beat it to death. Now, if you be doing this in the house, you can do this in a regular 12 inch cast iron skillet right there on the stove. I'd start out on about medium high heat. And then as this gets to cooking, we can turn it down. But I'll give you another tip too that my mother would sometimes get in a hurry. She would brown the meat in the skillet and then put it together in a crock pot and just turn it on low and it'd be there when me and daddy come in. It was what you call a handy dandy happy meal and it was ready. We got our meats browned up and when it did get brown, you see me, I just sort of tilted it to one side, strained that grease out there. I just throw it in the fire. Don't do it in the kitchen floor. You'll get you a beat with one of them husband trainers. Remember them rolling pins? Ain't no good for you, it ain't. We put that large Vidalia up there on that cutting board and we done sliced it up with the hash knife. You, you don't have one? Shan will have you a link where you can find one. And I'm gonna tell you right now, do not get your fingers in the way of it because it will take a hold of all of it. Rotail. Some of y'all might not be able to find this where you are, but it comes in a different brand and it's called what, Shan? What? 
diced tomatoes and green chilies. That's all it says on the can oh. in some stores. So find you some of this and it'll have something on there. It'll say original or it'll say medium heat or it'll say hot or it'll say spicy. Go to whatever your liking is. And we're gonna dump her in there. It's been drained, it has. Dump her in there, give it a little stir. Guess what? Some mustard. Now folks, I have known people to try to put that ground mustard in there, but I really don't be liking it. I just like regular old mustard. So we're gonna put us about three tablespoons in there, which is about that much right there on the money. Guess what? Any kind of barbecue sauce you would want to use, but I like to use about a half a cup. Now, remember me telling you I was gonna put some of that green chili chipotle relish in it? Folks, this here stuff make ice cream taste better. You ain't got none, you're gonna be needing some. If you're wanting to make this tonight and you don't have none on hand, get you some of them adobo peppers. Whew. Chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. Put you about two of them in there, finely chopped, and maybe three or four tablespoons of that sauce if you want to heat things up in the kitchen and make things get to jiving. Dump the whole can in there. I don't care because something's going to happen. See what's in here? About a fourth of a jar, maybe even a third. There it went, right in there. And, ooh, folks, that is what makes a sloppy joe for sure. Get this all stirred back up. We still got one more thing that's coming. Last but not least, a very important ingredient. Remember, sweet and heat. Here, a little more sweet. Brown sugar. About, I'd say nearly a half cup. Get it all stirred up in there well. And this, folks, I hear some of you out there hollering. Cowboy Kent, you ain't supposed to cook nothing that's tomato-based paste or barbecue sauce and cast iron. It's hard on your seasoning. Folks, that thing is about 31 years old and has been seasoned well every time. I don't recommend you do this in a brand new Dutch oven or skillet, but if it's something you've been using for a while, go ahead on. Just remember, clean it every time you get through, dry it on heat, re-season, you're not gonna have a problem. Now, I'm gonna set this right here where it's at and I'm just gonna let it sit there and sit. We are gonna have to get it a little closer to the fire because my burner ain't like yours. So we're gonna turn it right there like that Folks, if you got a lid at this time in your life, I'd like for you to be covered because it's all about the simmer. I don't want it to boil. I just want it to sit there and whisper a little simmer and drops of love all the way through it. Just make all them flavors blend together. That's what make this good. And I'm gonna let her go about 20 minutes maybe. I'm gonna let all the love get to it. And I'll tell you why, because when them cowboys used to come in out there at camp, I'd see them go over at that pile of buns that I had laid out there, and some of them would get four. Lay them out there on them plates like an open face sandwich. Is that what you call one of them deals, Shan? Open face? That's fancy. Spoon that sloppy joe on over, top it with some more cheese, and eat it. Never in my life have I ever had any leftover sloppy joes. Never. It just don't happen. This was a staple on so many ranches for a noon meal that they'd request and say, Hey, Cookie, we could have that for breakfast or supper. It is that good, folks. It will stick to your ribs. Now, folks, we've been on about maybe 10, 12 minutes at the most. You can see the love is just simmering there along. This is a good time to just reach right in here and get smoke in your eyes. Was this song, Shan? Smoke gets in my eyes. Did you ever sing that to me? I, I, no? I don't sing. This is what you call tasting to adjust your taste if you need to season more. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Folks, it's what you call hit all eight cylinders on them taste buds. We ain't got to do it no more. I have made this dish so many times I could probably make it in the dark, blindfolded with one foot tied up. It is fine dining. Now, if it don't suit your taste, now would be a good time for you to try to alter your taste buds a little bit. 
because I think it's just right. No, really, if you think you need it just a little more sweeter, add you a little more brown sugar in there. You want it a little hotter? Hey, get you some more of them adobo peppers and put back in there. You want it to have a little more of a barbecue flavor? Hey, chunk you some more of that sauce in there. This is a happy meal that don't come in a sack, folks, and you can change it, but why would you? I have done perfected it. Now, at this time would be a really good time. What? Let's put some cheese in there, folks. Now, you can add as little or as much as you want. I like to use cheddar. I do. I think it gives a great flavor. Shan's had it with mozzarella. Some people use pepper jack. Hey, combine all 18 of them if you need to because, folks, we're about spreading the love and putting some cheese on there. Now, we're not going to cook this a long time at this point because I don't want none of that cheese to be burning. I just want it to incorporate in there and melt well. It sort of binds all them juices together. Give it a little stir. Don't take it long to melt it, don't. And if you think you need some more of it, hey, get you some more in there. I'm all for it. You can even throw it in there if you want to. I don't care, but it's all about the cheese now. But you can see how that cheese, when it melts, sort of is a binding agent that pulls this together. Mm, folks, it don't get no better than this. Well, cheese has melted it has simmered along Whoa, did you see that flavor jump out of there and we take that lid off i have been working with the youtube folks and nasa trying to get smell of vision to be incorporated into your living rooms maybe someday folks you never know didn't i get fancy on you today a sesame <laughs> seed bun boy this is what's happening now i got a little question i want to ask shan because i have done this numerous ways and i don't want to get in trouble now, this is what you call what part of the bun, Shan? The bottom. Okay, did you know that sometimes I go ahead and just put my meat on this side? No. Is that wrong? No. No? Ha, folks, I think you can put it on the mirror any way you can. But let's get in there and get us a big old honking spoonful of that. And you can see how that cheese and everything sort of binded stuff together. And that right there is goodness all on its own. Slap it right here on here. Mm. If some runs off, don't worry about it. We'll get it when we go back with the spoon and lick everything off that cutting board. A pretty sprinkling. So, guess what I do right here? Shan says, hi, huh? but I like to take a little of this. This bun is just feeling left out over here. Smear it right over so it can just go ahead and soak up some of that goodness. Slap that thing, watch this. Slap her on there to where that oozes out just a little. And then you just grab it right here like this. And oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. the heat, the sweet, the onions. That was so good, folks. Hope you don't mind before we do a little dancing that I have just one more little bite right here away from that pickle shim. It's sort of like doing that washing machine. Uh-huh. Get all sloppy everywhere throwing stuff. That's the sloppy Joe right there it is. Woo! That stuff is good, ain't it, Dookie? Mm-hmm. The flavors you get, but folks, something I've always needed in there and it's always been there is the little crunch of that onion. That's why you don't saute them with that meat to where they're soft. I like to get that crunch that that Vidalia brings out in there. Mm, great flavor. Well. That is some fine dining and fine dancing it is. We hope you enjoyed today's episode because it was a special treat for me. This is one of my most favorite dishes to create and I'm sharing it with all of y'all because what are y'all? Family, that's what it's about, remember? As always, I tip my hat to all our service men and women, all the veterans who have kept this old country safe and that old flag of flying above the wagon. God bless you each and every one. And thank you for taking care of us and old glory. Now, for the rest of you, if you're a new viewer, hey, we welcome you in here with open arms. Come on, and while you're getting close, get you by it. I don't care. <laughs> that'll be fine. Rest of you, hey, you know we're always glad to see y'all here. We never take it for granted that y'all watch our videos. And remember now, big spring it is. March 17th, the cookbook comes out, Faith, Family, and the Feast. And folks, I'm wanting to have for y'all to help us to try to make 1 million subscribers as the book comes out. That's March 17th. Do your math, back it up, figure it out. If you ain't got but 21 subscribers in your house, go ahead and grab 34 more and put with it and subscribe. That way we get to that million. They gonna be a big party, folks. Woo, they level the lights and lights up and get after it. 
And as always, me and Sham, thank you so much. God bless you, each and every one, and we'll see you down the Sloppy Joe Trail.